Mm -hmm. Hi everyone. We have a live today with a wonderful, wonderful guest and I can't wait for her to join us. Can't wait for you all to join us as well. What have you been up to? My name is Tux Aratore and I'm the interior designer and the CEO at the Baby Cut Shop in Chelsea, which is where you find the most beautiful furniture, linings, everything for the baby's nursery. Oh, hey, Joanna, you have joined us. Nest and the rest, welcome. Okay, Joanna, you need to do a um, request to be in your video. And then I'll get some notification. But I hope your day is going well. Hi, the Canon guy. Cecil Design London. I can't wait to hear what you do. What's Cecil Design all about? Okay, I think I can see. Accept. And Joanna, did you do this as a collaborator? Have I accepted you? I have your request. Hey! Hi! <laughs> How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I am well. I am loving today's weather. Oh. I'm loving the fact that it's a bank holiday weekend. <laughs> Not me. I absolutely hate the heat, but you know. <laughs> Don't need to see you. You look wonderful as always. Anyhow. So do you. So do you, Joanna. And I really can't wait to dive into our chat. So excited. And thank you for joining us. This is like, this is, um, I think we need to build our community of people who work with children's rooms like you know just <laughs> no I'm with you and you know what i'm really looking forward to this as well because it's a very rare opportunity for me to actually um talk to someone who does exactly the same thing and exactly uh, we can always learn from each other which is amazing so thanks 100 percent yeah i'm excited as well you know because it's funny how um even though we also specialize in nursery rooms and children's rooms I think that it's always really good to get other people's perspectives because your design style is unique to you alone and ours is unique to, our, to us, isn't it? Yeah. And there is a stamp that you put on your designs that no one could ever emulate. So while this might sound a little bit weird, like why are two interior designers serving the same niche market, having a life together? Well, because you can learn from both of us, that's why. <laughs> We're both in London, London is so big. And there is, Absolutely. I feel there's not enough of us, to be honest with you. I agree. I you agree. Know, so, Absolutely. So, much, so, so many clients. London is so big. Why not? Absolutely. I agree. I absolutely agree. Oh, but I'm super, super excited. So how's your day been? What have you been up to? Oh, well, you know, <laughs> it's nearly the end of summer. So um, I also have two kids, two boys. Oh. How old are they? Oh, you have two boys. I didn't know you had two boys. You're also a boy mom. <laughs> um, they are seven and nine, so they keep me very, very busy. As you know, as you know, yes. both yes. the entity on their own. Um, so I am looking forward. Next Friday is first day of school for us. <laughs> oh, lovely. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and then the rhythm starts again. You know, there is something about the school year. And I remember my kids are older now, but my youngest is in secondary school. He's 14. But I remember never quite being sure what I loved. Did I love the holidays in the sense that there was no school run? Or did I love the school term in the sense that they were out of the house during the day and I had some breathing space? 100%. You don't know <laughs> if it's the routine that you like or is it the routine that you actually don't like? Exactly. Yeah, the uh, motherhood is very complicated, isn't it? <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. Okay, so I can't wait to find out even more about you because we have these two things in common so far. We love designing children's rooms and we have, we're both boy moms. I have four boys of my own and they are, you know, the life. <laughs> I know you know the life oh, but it's wonderful so let's start by getting to know more about you joanna can you tell us how you got into tell us a little bit about you and how you got into children's interior design yeah 100 percent. so um well, going back to probably 2017 i actually have a background in dentistry oh okay uh, 
Uh, I was, uh, I'm still am um, registered a dental therapist, dental hygienist. So not many people know who that is, but um, dental hygienist, let's stick to that. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I had children and um, I found that that profession was just taking a little bit too much out of me. It was difficult mm -hmm. managing my time, being at home. It was very complicated. I did enjoy it. Mm, and it was a completely different profession, so highly regulated from every angle, something that's completely, completely different to interior design. Mm -hmm. But I always loved interiors and mm -hmm. I just took a plunge. I had a very support, I still do, have a very supportive husband that's good. Uh, in a completely different industry. He works in restaurants. Um, and whatever I desired, he always supported me, not only financially, you know, but mm. just encour with encouragement that yes, you can do it, whatever you like to do, I believe in you. So that was amazing. And then um, I did an internship with a um, local designer. Okay. I worked with her, I actually kind of understood that I enjoyed children's interior design mostly because I love color. Color is just something, as you can tell. You I can tell. <laughs> color is just within you. And um, I had kids on my own, so I just felt bringing my own experience as a mom um, together with my love for interiors, mm. uh, no brainer for me, really. I, I this, this, this was meant for me, basically. And so that was 2017. Um, and now in 2022, uh, and I've completed, a, I mean, I was counting the other day, actually, how many projects I completed. And it's very difficult to say because, you know, some, some of them are smaller, some of them are That's big. That's right, um, yeah. I think I'm near 100 now. Wow, that's impressive. Well done. Well, um, yeah, I'm very proud of myself, if I may say. Mm -hmm. You should be, absolutely. Oh my goodness, what an exciting journey. And you know what's so funny? It's like where our sisterhood is literally unraveling with this life because I also have a background in the medical industry. And I used <laughs> to be, I do, I used to be a medical rep and I worked for a pharmaceutical company uh -huh. and then also had my children. And after I had my third son, I uh, tried to get my job back, but with reduced hours again, because, you know, as a young mom um, and, and they were not forthcoming, that wasn't going to happen. And so my husband, who is also very supportive, said to me, why don't you do what you really love? I'm like, I don't know what I love. Like, you know, when you're young, you don't you don't really know yourself. You don't know the things you love. You know what you admire, but you don't necessarily know what you love. Yeah. But I happened to be reading a book at the exact time when the email came in from my former employers and the book in the book that someone had written into the author saying how do i know what my gift is and the author said your gift is that thing you do so effortlessly that mm. everyone else thinks it's such a big deal except you and for me it was interiors because everyone loved my home and they kept you know asking me and recruiting me to design their homes for them yeah. all of my friends and family and um, then I enrolled on a couple of design courses and then set up a residential firm which was not specific to kids it was just general residence and then we moved to the United States and I purchased this amazing business selling baby furniture and all of that stuff and that was how I got into the space of interiors for little ones and then lost everything and came back to the UK and then started a new business here. So it's, it's some similar journeys in the yeah. sense that we didn't necessarily grow up knowing that we wanted to do interior design, but it was just life's, you know, one day to the next and then you discover something that's natural to you like yeah. color for example. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. And you know, my, my, um, my well, downfall, I always, I always doubt myself a little bit um, just because I didn't have this artistic background to begin with. Mm -hmm. And you just always question yourself. And um, But I've actually, I've grown. To yeah, a, that's good. Maybe I'm not too bad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We're always better than we think we are, mm -hmm. you know, because we, we tend to set imaginary standards for ourselves based on what we think people want to see in us, don't we? And then we fall short of those standards, but the standards are not even real. Like yeah. who's setting them? And it's, it's usually us, isn't it? 100%. I agree with you. That is exciting. Okay. So when it comes to designing nurseries, I mean, we deal with like a whole range of, of families, both here in the UK and, and abroad as well. And our clients range from the super duper organized mom to be who has already figured everything out she knows exactly what she wants 
she knows what shade of fabric she of rose she uh, wants in her fabric she knows the trim she knows the cut and then she walks in and just orders everything right she knows where everything is going to go or she might ask us to um, help with planning the layout and so on but she already has an idea and then we have the, the mom to be who, or the mom who is like totally clueless like i don't even know what a moses basket is i don't know what to do with a cart <laughs> i don't know what to do with you know i know nothing about fabrics help me what yeah. sort of clients do you deal with and how do you um, address each one? So how would you deal with, for example, a mom comes up to you and says, you know what, I need to have my, my nursery room done or my child's, my, my toddler's bedroom done. What's your process from the first contact, from the time they meet you? So, uh, you know, as, as you said, clients are very different. And um, sometimes it's the first time moms, which, truthfully, mm -hmm. well, um, the easiest to work with because you have a degree of um i don't want to say control it's not the control it's just you are there to help them to guide freedom. them to yeah them. exactly so you've got so much freedom and i also enjoy maybe that's the medical side coming out in me as well i really enjoy giving them a helping hand mm. not only as a designer but also as a mum. Mm. just it's just the feeling of letting them know what was actually essential what isn't i really on that just not to push them to get this to get that and i, I just say you know what's actually step back is five items and then mm -hmm. you have the baby you can just pair other new items etc exactly. um but every client is different so let's say um if i get a new mom which is my favorite it's, it's my favorite niche new mom um who doesn't know anything i'm actually working with a client now um not far from me which is um that's really enjoyable because that's the yeah. mom and she said, um, I absolutely know nothing. You know, can you just do it for me, please? I, I don't have time. I'm not even that interested. You know, I'm having a baby. I'm enjoying having the baby, but I, I don't know I'm any, anything. <laughs> so that's wonderful. And then um, my starting process is basically, I go into their house. I want to get to know them first. So yeah. meeting clients is really essential, as you know. Not only getting to know the person, but understanding how detailed they are if that makes sense mm -hmm. because some people are very into details some mm -hmm. more practical so it's just kind of which ones are they um so we i do have a little trick up my sleeve that i'm with you so uh when parents tell me they don't know anything they don't know what they color they like what pattern and i actually um go into their wardrobe Mm. and I asked them to show me their wardrobe. Um, so that means, you know, it can be a little bit intrusive to some, but that's my technique. I really pride myself on that method. Yeah. And it gives me an insight into the colors they like. They like, yeah. This pattern, uniform color. It's, it's, it's a great insight into, into what the nursery is going to be. And truthfully, Sometimes when I look back at the client, what she's wearing, I know what kind of what nursery we will get at the end. That's right. Yeah. It's really, it's a great guide. And, um, and then um, we do a little brief at home. Uh, we go through what they think they need. I give them advice what I think they will need. Um, so two different things. And then um, I create a couple of mood boards. I always give them choice. So I would create mm. two or three mood boards. So that's probably the most lengthy pr process on my end because it takes a lot of time mm -hmm. uh, and then um, I present it to my clients and basically we go from there we pick fabrics cushions as you know everything the curtains the colors the textures the furniture mm -hmm. everything very detailed and every design takes approximately three months three four months to install mm -hmm. That sounds, that sounds really, I love the fact that it's really personal in the sense that you even go as far as like, let's see your wardrobe, what, what do you want? And that way you're designing for the client as opposed to trying to force your idea of what you think they want on them. And we do something similar as well. Like we, a lot of times have consultation in our shop on the Kings Road or mm -hmm. we would go to the client's home. And now, you know, with, with, we were doing video consultations previously, but with, with the pandemic and everything, they've, become, they've actually increased. And so we also will do a video consultation and find out more about them. And we've got a, a questionnaire that we send out to, 
prospects and just say, you know, fill this out because it gives us a lot of insight into what to avoid and just to get to know more about the client. And yes. I so agree with you about not just buying everything, you know, um, because being a retail store as well, so we're not, we're primarily a baby furniture company um, with a retail showroom in London, but also we do the interior design of nursery rooms, children's rooms and playrooms. And it, it, it would seem like the natural thing would be for us to want to sell everything to the clients. But then yeah. we put the clients first and know that, and like, especially me being a mom, I know exactly that you don't need everything that yeah. the baby list, you know, the list tells you that you need. You don't need absolutely. And we've had complaints from care providers or service providers who have worked with expectant moms with, uh, you know, some businesses will sell everything to them. So you, you need space for the, your baby to toddle around in. You need, yeah. you need to be able to take, to be able to take in the design of the room. And if it's all cluttered and cramped with everything, you're not even going to yeah. notice what's and there. It's because there's always um, hundred advisors around you when you're a new mom and everybody has something to say about yeah. what should you have? What shouldn't you have? Mm. Uh, and, 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 be, and you just get lost, you're you overwhelmed, especially when it's yeah. a baby. Do you need this? Do you need that? Is that really necessary? And just pile yeah. up, yeah. but also the space, as you said. Yeah. You need I to be able to crawl around, you need to space yeah. for yourself to sit on that as well. Mm -hmm. That very often I find. I agree. I agree. And to your point about um, um, you get a lot of advice from people, that's, that's something. I mean, I love. You know, when I had my first son, I had mm -hmm. a perfect pregnancy. Everything went perfectly well. I was a guru on all things maternity, antenatal moms, everything to do with it. I read every magazine until, of course, the child came out. Let's start with the fact <laughs> that I had an emergency on planned cesarean section. That's when things just went, my knowledge seemed literally paled because you really cannot prepare fully for mm -hmm. motherhood and you can't prepare for this season of your life. And so we offer a consultation within our shop well obviously the design consultation but also a mommy consultation where sometimes oh. moms come in and they have no clue and they're, they're they're tired and they're confused and overwhelmed and grandma said this and mom said this and my best friend said that and my sister-in-law said that and the <laughs> one piece of advice that I wish I had with my first child was just do you you know mm -hmm. there is no right way to do it and there is no wrong way to do it just mm -hmm. do you just allow who you are as a person to come out but i think that also comes with maturity as a person yes sadly sadly you can't yes. that situation yes I, yeah. mean, I wish i were a bit more of myself um but you just don't know it's such a new thing to you you it just yeah. yeah exactly it is indeed so um one of the issues as well that we face, so besides the overwhelm as mom, as becoming a mother or, or deciding on, you know, raising your child or advice on even the nursery, is the overwhelm from Pinterest and house and all these wonderful inspirational places whereby you get that you see inspiration and you want a replica of what you see, but then you're looking from the outside in and, and it doesn't actually reflect your yeah. personal style and it doesn't reflect even your lifestyle, you know, or it doesn't, worse, it doesn't even reflect your own nursery. If you've got mm -hmm. a really small space and you, you've got a beautiful Pinterest nursery that's so many feet, a thousand square feet big, you know, how do you deal with it? So how do you deal with clients who uh, come to you? We, you know, I, I definitely have this idea and this is what I really, really want and you know it's not going to work for them. Yeah. How do you handle it? You know, I think it's w one thing that new parents don't realize is actually in the first 12 24 months of when the baby comes this nursery will become your room mm. spending there probably eight hours a day um, frankly you will be spending there a lot of time and i think think about yourself as well i say to them you know you will be feeding your baby here putting them to sleep reading the stories mm. don't forget yourself that's right don't forget yourself have make sure there's a space for you to sit i understand we live in London, mm. some of us have tiny, tiny bedrooms. 
fine. If it's floor, let it be floor. Just make it cozy, make it comfortable for yourself. Don't rule yourself out because that is really important. And I know everyone has this dream of making this beautiful nursery themed and colorful and engaging and you know, <laughs> all about development. But I think start with yourself. That's number one. Yeah. I also, what I also do often is I talk to my clients about their rooms as they were growing up mm. because people sometimes have this um, association between they want to replicate what they had, what they had as well. yeah and so I talk about that because I I want to give them a piece of that obviously that is their little association mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but maybe scale it down a little bit mm -hmm. I'll make it more current make it more trendy basically so mm -hmm. I often um, which takes a lot of my time give clients an option so I, I do visuals i create visuals for my clients to see what the rooms are after so i often give them a visual of exactly what they ask me for and then i explain to them why this will not work what are the limitations of putting that extra chest of drawers or choosing that big chair or that yes. they had in mind i said this is what it is this is what it's going Right? I make everything to scale, dimensions, and then I explain your baby will be crawling here, so yeah. they will probably end up falling over. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's almost just I have to show them the reality of yeah. what they think my work yeah. won't be practical. Yeah, I and agree. Just scale, scaling down and sort of pushing them towards towards the, the, my... more, the more, not the more, the merrier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. And we do the, the same as well. And God bless those floor plans because we've had situations where, you know, we, we some of the cots we sell are really, really large. There's a particular yeah. one that we sell that's huge. Yeah. And very, 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 you know, the one. It's very yeah. special, very well loved, a Savio Firmino piece. And sometimes people, like, we remember one case we had a client who wanted it centered, like in a particular spot yeah. in her room but she also wanted a specific sofa and we make everything to order. So all of our furniture is made to whatever size suits the room. That's, that's one of the beauties of what we do, but she wanted a specific size of the cot and a specific size of the sofa bed and a specific size of everything. Um, and just wanted them everything large and she did have a big space, but there was an issue with the placement of the cot and the sofa bed, which ideally would have been nice directly opposite each other, mm -hmm. but then you wouldn't have been able to open up the bed. And we, we did go back and forth with it. And, and then when we showed it, we did, we did a plan, a, a floor plan, but then we did a miniature, um, yeah. I don't even call it a mood board, like a model yeah. where we literally made paper versions of the sofa bed and folded mm -hmm. it and then opened it up and she made paper shapes of the cot and everything. Oh, I love that. Then she, then she, she understood. But it's it's sometimes uh, it really that's where why consultation is so essential and communication I think is so important as well because then if without good communication your client is going to think you're just pushing back for the sake of pushing back. Yeah. You know, but then they learn to trust you and the the interaction you have with them at the beginning and getting to know them super super important because they get to they get to trust you so sometimes yeah absolutely absolutely so do you um do you travel outside of london or you do you do mostly london so i mostly do london um but i live in southeast london in greenwich oh okay from every most clients um mm. i travel across london all the way northwest sometimes it's an hour hour and a half yeah. one but that's it is what it is um you know yes. yeah it's fine i also do um i do advise i've worked with a few clients in cambridge in mm. Belgium, in germany so mm. i have done a few projects remotely mm. with some challenges i'm sure you know yeah um, i actually don't see the space that is quite challenging there's a lot of back and forth with videos and photos yeah but mostly I work with people across London unless they are small assignments then I can advise that makes perfect sense we do the same as well I mean we do we do London I, I think would I say the bulk of our clients are in London um 
it's hard to tell because oh. you know we are obviously located here but yeah. then i guess because of our furniture and everything that we sell we we literally are spread around the world and in terms of client base but yeah there are there are unique challenges or uh, yeah. that you have to overcome when when doing it outside of your locality or outside of where you live yeah. and different also... sorry i missed that and different time zones different time zones yes let's not forget that <laughs> i'm waking up at 3 a.m in the morning to make a call <laughs> yeah. so um what is your what inspires you like i know you've talked about inspiration for clients like mm -hmm. from them but what inspires you as a designer um mostly art mm. um i never thought i would get to the stage actually in going to my previous life, I would be inspired by art mm. and nature, but mm. it's more about the color combinations that I yeah. see. And that really, I see a combination and it really appeals to me. I think it works really well. Um, so that's my major inspiration. And it can be anywhere. You know, it could be a poster somewhere or it could be a graffiti somewhere in yeah. London. There are just little things you see here and there that really stick out to you and, and I take a photo and I see it and then sometimes I go back to it. But also, let's be realistic, I also look at your work, I oh. look at people's work and I get inspired. So I also use Pinterest, I look at Instagram, I am on a lot on Instagram, I love Instagram. <laughs> um, so I also look at other people's work and I and I get inspiration from that little little detail that I like. Yeah, exactly. That's a, you know that's the beauty about being con about being human. Yeah. Just the connection that we share, isn't it? Because we all inspire each other in one way or the other. I tend to get inspired by music. I really love music. I love. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a I'm a, like a, a I'm permanently on on Spotify. So I love music and I'm inspired by music. And I get. I also am inspired by people. You know, sometimes I meet people, interesting people like you and mm -hmm. just having a conversation and it sparks off things in my head. And then I'm also inspired by by beauty and excellence. And it's not not to say that that's what my life looks like or represents, yeah. <laughs> but more like when I see people in their craft, it really, really inspires yeah. me. So when I see an artist painting or I see um, an, an instrumentalist with their instruments or a mm -hmm. singer, I get so stared up by that and I get inspired by that. So oh, that's beautiful. That is true. <laughs> that gets to me as well. Exactly. What name one thing that you feel we should avoid in a nursery? What's one thing that you and I'm gonna ask you what your mm. next pet peeve is. <laughs> your next question will be what your pet peeve is, but what should we avoid in a nursery? I think that one thing we should all avoid in the nursery, which I have to say, I have done a couple. Mm. the tv yes i'm with you on that and i think i have to say i probably it happens more often than people mm. think is the tv yeah uh, tv is number one um also people often ask me plants mm. yeah plants they look great especially in the boho inspired nurseries yeah beautiful banana plant yes but it's gonna get eaten by that toddler so, <laughs> so um that's a no-no that's a no-no so i think oversized furniture as you yeah. you said really look with uh, work with your dimensions mm. how much space you have available take a measuring tape yeah um, and sometimes what i do i also take um, a masking tape mm. and mask out the floors so that clients get an idea of how big everything how much space would you have to squeeze in or... absolutely we do the same as well it's necessary so, little thing how about you what do you think i agree with you 100 percent on the tv and i don't like crammed rooms so yeah. you know there are some nursery brands that maybe would sell an entire set you know there is there is the cot then there is the changing unit there's the wardrobe there's the bookcase there's a toy box there's the wall shelf and when you go to the shops and see every, or you look online and you see yeah. everything beautifully displayed, it's not necessarily practical and it's not necessarily needed either. Yeah. So we always, for us, like the minimum or the, the basics of a nursery would be your cot, obviously, 
yeah. your changing unit, which should yeah. convert to, you know, because all of our furniture is made to last forever. Yeah. Our pots convert to beds. Our changing units convert to regular chest of drawers that yeah. can be used forever. And I, and I also, my, my best, highly recommended is, a, is this chair I'm sitting in. It's a, a rocking chair. So a nursing chair that is comfortable for you to sit on and yeah. feed your baby with. But I also... <laughs> But also, you have to pop in. And I well, have you even been in here? Why do I feel like you? Oh have my! No, I walked walk past your shop. I think it was a month ago or so. Oh, but, did you? No. Because I know we did have. You had a client, didn't you? We we've had a. There was a client. Yes, I remember because I kept trying to remember on my way in that we've worked together in some capacity before, yeah. and I remember there was one client who. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, so I recommend a nursing chair. And um, at, at the very least, because you spend many, 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 many hours sitting in the chair feeding your baby. But beyond that, and why I love these particular yes. ones is that it's roomy enough to read to your toddler as your baby gets older. And then it transitions into something you can use in the rest of the home. And so at the very least, get those. And then... You know what I've noticed? That most of the nursing chairs, they don't really... And truthfully, I don't understand why. I think they need me on board. They don't have the right arm support for the no. baby. Mm -mm. Most, I, most of them, truthfully, it's it's really disappointing. And yeah. I, something has to be done about this. I know. Well, we solved that problem here. You know, it's funny because it is with confidence that we some we tell when when parents come in and they're trying our, our chairs on and everything, and they're not sure. We encourage them to go yeah. over to like, hey, go try all the others and then make your decision and come back. Because ours was developed over a period of time addressing mm -hmm. these exact issues you've mentioned. So we've even had one time, one, we've had uh, our chair at one point, the arms were way too low. They were not comfortable enough. Um, then at one time we had the oversized cushions which and the, and the seats, which was super, super comfortable. However, it was unsightly to look at because it was made entirely of feather yeah. and it meant that you'd have to plump it every and think of a mom who's just had a c-section and is just trying to get recover can yeah. be picking up cushions and plumping them so 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 we've evolved over the years with them and they are we know that there are no more comf you cannot find a more comfortable chair yeah. than our chairs and and we're we're so yeah <laughs> you yeah. need to go on board on on those other companies that those other chairs that are and then I, also the fact that it, it's an investment and then you can use it for years and years to come so and then pass it along hopefully pass it along exactly yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah absolutely awesome so we've had some questions come yeah. in and and if you've just joined us we are chatting with the absolutely wonderful joanna from eclectic studios and someone is asking, what design services do you offer? Hi, Ankita. So we are both nursery and children's interior designers. And so Joanna does playrooms, children's rooms, nurseries, and we do exactly the same. And we also are, are a furniture brand as well. And so we sell furniture for babies and children as well. And I'm just checking. Oh, I have a question for you. So um, I am five months pregnant. Is it possible to have a nursery design designed in such a way that will last the baby for the next five to six years of course okay we just have to be very clever mm -hmm. and um discuss how we can make your nursery um create it in a very flexible way so the decor has to be i don't want to say neutral but it can mm -hmm. be easily adapt let's say the wallpaper mm -hmm color and accessorize maybe accessorize with age appropriate accessories yeah and you can change them so it doesn't have to be an expensive um way of redecorating it just has to be clever good, good. so as you said you, as you said yourself uh talks your all, all of your furniture converts into toddler bed mm -hmm. so we have to choose the right furniture absolutely and then the decor has to be just adaptable really so yeah. you, you don't necessarily have to have um i don't know starry wool or, yeah <laughs> neutral and accessories with little things little prints that are inexpensive time yeah that's a really good way you can actually have a uh, have you have one shade one neutral shade throughout if you want to and then throw in the color and the prints and the patterns with easily changeable accessories and so that way <laughs> 
you know, you can just modify because you know what, your little girl might love fairies right now, but only God knows what she's going to love in like two years time. So you want to be able to change things easily. Okay, so we've got another question. As someone who is an aspiring entrepreneur, I wanted to ask, what do you consider more important between aesthetism and mm -hmm. functionality? That's a really good question. From the Canon guy. Do you want to go first? You would say, actually. <laughs> say that again? What would you? What would, what you would I say? Oh, my goodness. I think I would have to put functionality. Me first. too, 100%. Yeah. I think I will because the time comes when you actually stop seeing the aesthetics and you don't yeah. see the design any longer and it's more about how you live your life and everything and the truth is there's beauty in everything just because something is functional doesn't mean it shouldn't be aesthetically pleasing 100%. but but you I wouldn't sacrifice functionality for anything because if that's your lifestyle you know you only spend what, how long are we awake for and how long are we in the house for? But you, you are in the house and busy and pottering around all day. You're sitting down and watching television. You want to be in a comfortable chair. You know, you want to have items that you absolutely love and mm -hmm. items that are functional and items that are beautiful. But I'm going to put functionality Me. as number one. 100%. And I think, as you said, you spend a lot of time in your house and it's the little things in life. It's putting laundry away. Yeah. You sure that you have good access to that mm -hmm. drawer the drawer opens nicely <laughs> you know it's the height mm -hmm. of the cord so you can reach yeah. the baby so functionality 100 percent for 100%. me is the same. yep absolutely we're, 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 we agree on that one so i hope that answers your question the canon guy and oh we have some wonderful people who've joined us thank you atelia shu oh and sean chimes our client thank you Okay, I've asked Nikki's question. Nikki had asked the question about the, um, the question we just answered a short while ago about the growing with the nursery. And I've got mm -hmm. another question. What is a must have in every child's nursery? That's a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the cot, for sure. <laughs> although, although, I will also highlight that it's not necessity in the first month or so mm -hmm. i think remember yes. that the baby generally tends to sleep with you a lot so it could be a moses basket yeah. it could be sort of a, a co-sleeper and then you can purchase your cot so it's not a necessity in the first month or so although my job as a designer is to have it all ready for you before yes, you before baby comes that's right um but also important i'm sure you will agree with me uh, is a chair, nursing chair, mm -hmm. because you will spend a lot of your time there. And as Tox mentioned, if you have a cesarean section, you really need a comfortable space for yourself. Mm -hmm. Getting up will, might be an issue in the first six weeks or so. So that's important. Yeah. Uh, changing, changing station, changing unit, something that will be comfortable for you. Yeah, absolutely. Because after a while of bending over your bed or wherever you mm -hmm. want to change the baby, it becomes, it, it starts to hurt the back and it's just, it's a, it also takes away from the functionality. I really love that question about f functionality versus mm -hmm. being aesthetically pleasing because um, I think that when you're pregnant, especially for the first time, you don't know what you need. No. You know what the lists say and you know what Pinterest says and you know what <laughs> your friends have said. But you as a person, you actually don't know what you need. And one of the, the questions we ask on our design questionnaire is your, what's your lifestyle going to be like? Do you have a night nurse? Are you going to have a nanny? And then we provide a room for, for that. We provide a sofa bed or whatever is required. But everything's designed to suit your lifestyle. <laughs> and and that's, um, it's essential to not simply go run off, but it, it's really essential to call either the baby cut shop or eclectic studios and ask the question what do i need in the in my nursery it's always helpful to get the professional eye because we yeah. offer a service at the cut shop where we can either where you can you know we do a virtual a design consultation and you make the decisions yourself or we do a full-on interior design project building which mm -hmm. is when it and that takes us the same length of time it takes us three months because again all of our furniture is made to it's order and you know you get in the trades menu and all of that stuff and we project manage the entire process 
and you all, you can leave that with us, you know, and Joanna offers the same thing as well. Okay, so there's another question here. Tell us a project that you have absolutely enjoyed working on and why. There is a few, I have to say. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen on my Instagram, there is a playroom that I recently completed in mm -hmm. uh, and we, it's beautiful. It's a, it's a, it's a very, very large attic. Um, oh, wow. The girls. And we, um, we did a snake that, that runs across the slope ceiling. Oh, nice. I, I, I I loved, it's so simple. It's so simple and so cost effective, I will add, mm. because we used um, Dulux uh, samples. Oh, paint. interesting. Okay. You know, and so it was 80 pounds spent on materials. Wow. Truthfully. Wow. It wasn't me painting. Um, <laughs> it's not in my skill set. I have a zero <laughs> And we painted across the whole entire the entire slope mm. ceiling. We did the snake and we did stations across the room. So you had a TV area that was more for the parents with a beautiful yeah. corner. And we also had like a dressing up corner. Uh, we had the arts and crafts and every little corner had a different station. I love that. I love that. I think I'm getting into playrooms really now. Oh, I have to, I have to go back onto your Instagram and have a look at that. That just sounds really sweet. Yeah. How about you? Oh, Lord. I was hoping you wouldn't ask. It's really, <laughs> really, really hard to say. Mm -hmm. I have to be honest because we've done quite a few and every single one is just so unique and different yeah. and enjoyable, you know, every single one. So I wouldn't say the, the most enjoyable one because it's very, literally very hard to say. We mm -hmm. pour our hearts and soul into it. Yeah. And we totally exactly. love it. But I think the most challenging one we've mm. had or the most memorable one was when we had, um, we're doing a nursery literally at the start of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And the baby was due in, I think baby was due in June. No, I think in May, end of April, early May, some, some, somewhere around that. And the design, the nursery brief included some building work as well. We had to, mm -hmm you know, do some construction work within the space as well. And then the start of the pandemic and no one understood what COVID was and no, everyone was scared of each other. Oh my goodness. We yeah. had our wallpaper. So we, we installed silk. We, we love silk wallpaper. So we installed silk wallpapers a lot. And, and silk wallpaper has to be hung by a very specialist, very specific wall hanger. You can't yeah. have it done by just anyone. And so our spe specialist um, came onto the site the day he was supposed to start. <laughs> and, you know, they wanted to take his temperature. So this was a, a VIP family, a very... Um, uh, all our clients are VIPs anyway, but and I say that I say that with the most humility. I literally mean everyone's a VIP as far as we're concerned. We truly yeah. want the thing, but it was a, a family that I don't know what word to use, but anyway, they were insistent on taking temperatures and everything. They that was how they coped with, with mm -hmm. the COVID. And he didn't want to have his temperature taken because of the distance between him and the person who was going to be taking his temperature. He goes, no, I don't want to come within five meters of another human being. Like I don't want anyone in my space. I don't want, and, and we were like, but it's, it's the laser te uh, te thermometer <laughs> and he's going to do it from a distance. No, it's still too close. Still too close. <laughs> so, that was hard and then he walked off the site so so we had to very quickly find someone else and then and that was actually wasn't that when okay that wasn't when when brexit happened that was another one but then we also had um and the furniture was being made in italy and uh the pa the, the 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 pandemic was worse was really really bad there and factories had to close down there was a curfew so the workmen couldn't continue making the furniture and the baby was coming and the clients were like, I don't know, I know I don't care. I just want my nursery done. And so we had to install a temporal nursery there until everything was done. And we still had it done pretty much in the same color, the same scheme. Everything was done beautifully. 
so that they wouldn't feel the absence of what they were expecting. That was the most memorable. <laughs> you know, I have to say, it, it, this is the, probably the most stressful part of our job, isn't it? Mm. You know, there is a baby, there is a timeline that is yes. a important timeline. You can't really go beyond that. It's not yeah. enough. Exactly. Um, pressure of the, ba the baby's coming. The baby's coming, whether we like it or not. And so, uh, and, and you know, sometimes clients leave, uh, you know, the nursery. And sometimes it's for... Um, sometimes it's for superstitious reasons, sometimes it's cultural, but yes. there are cultures that wouldn't do the nursery too soon in advance. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so that can be a problem as well, especially when there is something like a pandemic, you know, where we don't even know. And we've had, I remember when Brexit happened as well, that was another one. We had a, a nursery that was due to be delivered just before Christmas and then Brexit had happened. And then there was a new variant of the pandemic at mm -hmm. of the virus at exactly the same time and delivery. And then there was an issue with the French border where they stopped uh, drive their drivers coming. They stopped people going out of the UK into France, across the French border. Yeah. But then um, no driver wanted to come and deliver stuff to us and get stuck here. So that was another. <laughs> so we had to send a van over to go bring it. But yeah, really, really exciting. Oh, I have a question here. What colors should one avoid in a nursery and why? In my opinion, none mm -hmm. it's not about the color it's about the quantity of the color yes and it's also sometimes about the sh the intensity the intensity yeah i agree so if you love a color if you love if you love black mm. why not yeah make it black just use a small amount of color if, if it's an intense color yeah as you, you, I'm sure you know, there is this proportion, um, you know, um, thing that we work with, which is 70% main color, 20% That's right. secondary color and 10% accent color. Mm -hmm. So as long as you keep that in mind, yeah. uh, I think it's a really simple rule to stick mm. to, to achieve a cohesive scheme of color. That's right. So I do use sometimes a uh, tricky, but I use yellow or orange sometimes. Mm -hmm. I do it in very small amounts. Small amounts, yeah be a cushion two cushions a print mm. um, little little details decorative items you yeah. know i wouldn't paint uh, a wall orange I no <laughs> unless very very muted very muted yeah like really burnt orange and and, and and also smaller quantities i agree because there is this um the fact that colors do have an effect on the psyche of us of babies yeah. as well and uh, yellow is it's funny you should say yellow is one of those that uh, supposedly makes babies cry and irritable and so on so you're right i can't think of a color that i would avoid completely mm -hmm. um i wouldn't want to use orange in a nursery but i'd happy you happily use it in a playroom in the or playroom. like you said in small quantities i mean it could be the the autumn leaf that's leaf that's falling down from the tree that's an orange and there's so many different shades that you can work with yeah, exactly. And I always think, you know, if you love something, fine, sleep on it, sleep on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sleep Absolutely. Sleep week, sam test, test samples, 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 samples. Mm -hmm. But don't save your money on samples. I always sometimes try 10, 12 colors. Yes, yeah. Shades of the same color before we actually before decide. you decide, yeah. Test it, test it, and test it, and test it again. I agree. And also a tip as well that we give is to paint a large patch on the walls of your nursery and look at it throughout the day at different yeah. times of the day. Because in the morning it might be great, but at night time you might totally okay. hate it. So yeah. look at it at different times of the day. And, and I do agree, uh, testing the colors is so essential. Oh. And the difference between half a shade and the next one can actually lift or dampen your mood like it just is so different so that's great excellent so uh see if there's any other question i think we've answered this question what do you consider the most challenging aspect of being an interior designer um do you, is there anything more to add <laughs> besides what we have said no it's just the the ticking bomb of making sure everything comes in time yes. and whether that is children's interior design or you know residentials, yeah. you 
you always want everything to come together at the right time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's really out of your control. So that, that's, that's, a, that's a stressful part of the job, as I'm yeah. sure you, you always have to sort of mediate between the supplier and the client. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> Right? We, 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 we always make it happen. We make it happen. You know, we make it happen. And to the point where I now, I, I know once upon a time, whenever any of my staff says we have a problem and I know we're in the middle of a major project, I used to panic. Mm. But I, I started to say there is no unsolvable problem. Mm. And I said that as a way to encourage them and also to encourage me and to stop me from panicking. But then in reality, when I look back at all of the projects we've done, we've never actually had a problem that have, have, we haven't been able yes. to solve, like literally never. So I think that also the, the wealth of experience we have really does help because we can foresee what the common problems could be. Yes. You know, we know what could go wrong. And that's why we recommend using a nursery interior designer if you are uh, looking to have a nursery done especially if it's on a large scale or you're time poor and you just don't have the time and you want it done properly so with joanna being a mom and i being a mom it means that beyond the aesthetics we understand functionality thank you canon guy <laughs> for bringing yeah. that to my to my attention so yeah so i think that's probably the last question but you have been absolutely amazing joanna and i've enjoyed chatting Likewise. So tell us, where can we find you? Where can people find you? Uh, well, uh, as I said, I'm very active on Instagram. Uh, so please give me a little follow. Mm -hmm. I love updating my stories. Um, and wherever I go, I always try to include a little story of before and after and my little updates, what I do on site, testing, mm -hmm. <laughs> testing colors and other things. Um, so Instagram is great. Otherwise, um, my website is also live. And I can answer any questions you might have. Excellent. Oh, that's, that's awesome. So that's Joanna. And we are based at 408 Kings Road. That's the baby cut shop in Chelsea, London, and we are also on Instagram and Facebook and all of the socials uh, handle is The Baby Cut Shop, and you can keep up to date with our blog, which is rich with tips on motherhood, tips on nursery design, children's rooms, days out, everything really. We kind of talk about everything to do with parenting on our blog. Our website is thebabycutshop.com. What's your website, Joanna? I don't think you mentioned that. Uh, eclectic-studio.com excellent but well, this has been a real pleasure thank you for joining us and thank you to everyone who has logged in to our live session there is so much more to talk about and we've got our, our youtube channel is youtube.com slash the baby cut shop and on there you'll find even more inspirational tips on designing your nursery or all things to do with parenting my name's Tox Aratui and it has been a real pleasure. Have a nice weekend. Bye, Joanna. Thank you.